Hey, here's a secret little stream. Well, stream? I don't know. If you stumbled across this video, then congrats. You're gonna watch me look up things on the internet and uh, casually chill while I go for the go for the kill. I don't know. So I'm just gonna make sure that Dolphin and OBS in particular are gonna run nicely. So make them above normal. OBS, which I love, is OBS dot or obs64.exe um, yeah but uh point of this video if you're watching it is uh I currently have how many star bits? 3,990 3,990 the goal is we're gonna get to 9999 at some point um so I guess the question is what's the best way to do that um because uh yeah I don't actually know off the top of my head so let's uh Google it, Super Mario Galaxy 2, uh, best way to grind star bits, we'll just say that. Um, you probably caught me at the end of, a uh, stream 6, or stream 5, I think it was stream 6, uh, running off the, uh, Twisty Trials Galaxy, and that's because, uh, the, um, you know, it, there's a lot of star bits, and then you can easily die and get an extra life, so there's that. Um, I saw one thing, which was... Melty Monster Mission 2. So let's check that one out. Melty Monster is this one. Oh my, uh, nunchuck is a little sticky. That's uh, not a good sign. Yeah, I gotta give it a good, a good rinse. You gotta watch out for your controllers getting icky. It's not fun. So stroll down rolling lane. Um. Someone said be sure to have P2 handy. Uh, that's a question, I guess. Yeah, get it right. You can get about 150 star bits a minute, they say. So I gotta make sure that I'm doing all right. They're not referring to like doing these, are they? Like hitting these? Nah, they don't. Well, they do give you stuff, but it's not that many. The flickering is a very odd thing. You see that? Oh, don't do that. There we go. Uh, oh boy, I'm gonna struggle with uh, making sure I'm poking the, the bits right, but yeah, it does pick up quite a bunch. Yeah, I see where they're calling. They're coming from. Uh, this part's very awkward. I've done it before, though. Oh, and you get a 1-up! Because you're getting 100 star bits. Okay. It's probably quicker to die a couple of times. Um, but that seems decently quick. Like, a, as, in, as in, you get to the end, you fall off. You do it again because you keep your star bits. You're obviously getting extra life because you're getting 100. Is that the same ghost? I don't know. There's a new clear time, so that's a minute, 16. Although, granted, then you've got to go back out, go back in. Yeah, it might, might take a bit. But yeah, no, uh, if you're casually watching this, uh, note that I'm probably not going to be saying a ton. Maybe I will say some stuff. Uh, but since I am not streaming this, if you're watching this, uh, it's all pre-recorded this time. It's not even streamed. Uh, but I thought, eh, let's record the process. Just so it's there. Just so it's there for posterity. Because I, I thought there's a lot of, um, I might as well talk about some meta video production. Air quotes video production. I always find, like, talking about, like, video production in a YouTuber sense, it's like... There's elements of the pipeline, but it's also like, especially when you do let's play content, it's like, eh, you're not really doing too much insane stuff when it comes to like having a big pipeline. Like, obviously, you know, I'm a one-man crew, so you just you just take it as it is, uh, and you got like some plans and ideas, but you don't like 
you know, it's, it's not like a crazy schedule. I'm, maybe maybe a Chugger Conroy type would. But for me, it's like, eh, you just, you just go simple. But that being said, uh, if you're... So now I'll just drop off because there's no more starbits. And then we'll, we'll refresh to commit the 999 starbits. Uh, and since I've got myself a little bit of a bonus for the starbits at the beginning, I should probably have this all done in six goes. As in six, uh, like, rounds of hitting 999 starbits in the level. Maybe seven if the rounding is not quite nice, but, uh, yeah, like, uh, way back in the day, um, it used to be, like, you know, you'd have to do your pipeline of, like, prepping yourself for recording, then recording, then editing, and then doing all your, uh, video, you know, process, your uploading to YouTube, that kind of stuff. Um, streaming cuts out, uh, like, step number two. Like, I still, I still record the videos and then render them, but I usually am pretty mild when it comes to the, um, the editing, just because, like, I know, I do the editing the day after now, and I know exactly how my stream went, so there's not really anything too weird. I think I, like, sometimes note, like, if I've got, like, a, well, actually, if anything, uh, I don't 100% check my, um, my recording quality, but it should be all right because I, I try to give myself as many safety nets. Um, and here's some pro strats for if you want to become an up and coming, uh, you know, live stream YouTuber. Uh, tip number one isolate your uh, audio sources if you can. Um, I've, I've figured this one out. I've had so many bad recordings back in the. I'm not. Oh, I am going to live. Um, back in the whole unregistered Hypercam 2 days, um, where the video is either like it's a poor quality or the audio is a poor quality, um, or in some cases it's, it's like the audio didn't record at all. I know I've got, um, uh, like some of the earliest ones, like when I played Donkey Kong Country, um, and I know I've got like parts, oh, maybe not Donkey Kong Country, but I've got games videos I recorded back in 2008, where the audio, I just never hit record on the audio. Um, I used to do it separately, like, I would record the video through unregistered Hypercam 2, and then the audio I would use Audacity or various other, um, kind of suspicious programs. Um, maybe I should go for the one-up from time to time, because I'm thinking, like, yeah, if I drop off, like, too often... Like, if I just jump here, yeah, it gives me a safety one-up. Um, you yeah, know, the audio was lost, and it's like, oh, okay. Uh, the nice thing about doing it in a stream format is that if you don't get it quite right, like, um, when you start streaming, hopefully someone picks up on the fact that you're not doing it. Hopefully. I've had some moments, I think I have had one moment where my audio is not recording, but... Uh, OBS is a nice tool. OBS is definitely a very nice tool because you get to see your audio levels in live in real time as well as also the current stage um, or scene uh, that's being recorded. So you can guarantee that like whatever you're filming is actually there because that's also a bit of a doozy. Um, I remember the ones that like they'd only work if you had um, or rather like they'd do like a, an outline, some kind of overlay on the screen to, um, to indicate that it's recording. Um, I used to use one, um, I cannot remember what it was, I think it was, I, my brain wants to say Video Land, that's for people, it's VLC, um, that's not that, um, oops, yeah, I've got to make sure I've getting that one up, because, oh boy, I'm getting a little sloppy sometimes, um, that seems to be probably the best way to do it, but it is going to take an hour, isn't it, that's a bit of a shame, <laughs> um, But, uh, there you go, double one up. They don't have the three up moons in this game. Alas, everyone misses the three up moons. Um, yeah, I think I've done like one stream where I didn't have my uh, game audio working for a couple of moments and then I, I spotted it. Um, the, yeah, the, 
the weird streaming or video recording software. Um, it was one of those kind of shady ones, but it surprisingly worked. Um, could it have been spying on me? Possibly. I don't know. You never know about some of these companies. You remember? I remember I used to be a, a user of um, uh, Speed Up My PCs, a program that's uh, pretty much there to do uh, kind of shonky things to your computer. But it worked, I guess? It wasn't like too weird, but it was probably like trying to be a bit of adware. Um, probably tracking things. That company went out of out of business uh, only a couple of years ago and uh, notoriously out of business like people a lot of people knew of that company um, also I say it worked but then it's just like you know we now live in a bit of a bit of a day and age where it's like oh, you probably don't even need like a fancy tool to speed up your PC if uh, really all it's doing like on a raw level is disabling um, various like Windows Arrow things. This was back in the Vista days, so it was like, you know, kind of necessary and some of the stuff was new, but it's also not doing anything like too groundbreaking. Um, I think I had definitely not paid for it. I, I don't, I don't recall paying for it and I feel like they had a free version that told you of how many things you could improve. Uh, yeah. All that, all that, uh, suspicious, uh, software is now kind of a thing of the past. But, uh, although I do see, um, Sea Cleaner floats around. Sea Cleaner might be a legit tool, but, uh, cleaning the registry seems like a kind of moot thing, because if you've got a decently fast, um, drive, like, pretty much it's any SSD, I guess, um, your registry's gonna, you know, work really quickly, and the whole point of... The registry is it's a it's a directory of things which gives it quick access time and people aren't searching the registry much so it's not it's not really too too slow for the most part. You can definitely like have so much fluff in the registry, but people are very reserved in it now. And I've got two ham. Uh, anyway, recording tips. Um, yes. So isolate your sources. Uh, make sure that your quality settings are as good as I... <laughs> well, that's a bit of a shame, is it? Um, make sure your, your quality settings are pretty good, but don't go too overboard. Because if, if you record too high quality, your disc starts kind of, not, not flipping out, but just... You want to be able to record comfortably through this. So I record at, um... I think, uh... I think I record at um, 12 megabits, which is not particularly high. If I really wanted like good source material, I'd start going for like 50 or 60 megabits. But 12, the reason why I do 12 is because it's fairly good. I don't play a ton of like crazy high detail games. And then it all ends up on YouTube. Twitch has a hard limit of six megabits. So if you're not recording your footage, um, and you're just streaming it straight to Twitch, it's gonna be capped at 6 megabits anyways, so no matter what you do, you can't do anything too much about that. Um, if you're the kind of person whose internet isn't the best and you want to do a post-stream upload later, um, I like 12. 12 is a nice number, because then, um, I think YouTube lets you upload at a bit of a higher bitrate. Um, let's donate these star bits as well, just to see if there's a fancy toad in the middle. Um, he's been working hard to find some more star bits. Oh, I did find the mine, so... Um... But... Yeah, the, uh... Oh, he still... still has the... Oh, he's got a 1-up. Or a 2-up! Oh! I'm digging everywhere looking for Zabbits, but I haven't found any treasure. Oh, he's gonna tell me I died? No. I know I died. D <laughs> you think they'd notice how many star bits I had and go, ah, oh, okay, it's probably not too bad. Or the fact that it's a star I've already done. Um, also, fun fact, I looked it up, uh, the bronze stars, which I've certainly never shown off on stream, um, where you, if you die too much in a level, you get a bit of a ghost that just goes, hey, I'm gonna beat the level for you. But you get a bronze star at the end. And the bronze star is basically a, a pity prize, where it's like, yeah, hey, you can continue the game, but 
your uh, your punishment is this particular star. It will not appear if you've still got brown, uh, bronze sides. You gotta get the actual star. So, which makes sense. It's the hardest star in the game that we got coming up. So. Yeah, uh, so yeah, set your bit rates right, um, but also, yeah, if you've got, like, a decent disc, go for it. I would highly recommend as well, um, buying, uh, nowadays, the fairly affordable, I would recommend buying a good, um, SSD. Sorry, not a good SSD, but just a, a, a decent capacity one. Um, it's a bit of an investment, I think people look for the, you know, really like the cheap uh, affordable solutions and I know me as a person starting out who had absolutely zero budget to go with making these videos um, well not zero budget because it's like well I've got some internet connection to upload stuff and a computer that can record things um, that, that should probably be one, number one is like make sure you got a computer that can record stuff um, <laughs> but uh, on, the, on the topic of like just other things you can record with um, so yeah obviously have have a computer that's got like a, a decently good processor. I think any processor nowadays that's new is fine, uh, unless it's like a strictly budget, um, like stripped down class CPU. I think there's like the um, Ryzen 4100, that one I'm a little bit unsure of. Uh, Pentium's uh, probably a bit dicey as well. Um, but maybe like the 12100, or um, I don't think the 5500 is particularly bad in its job for this. Um, but really, like, there's a lot of, you know, good new CPUs. And it doesn't have to be a new CPU if you've got a slightly older one. Like, I'm rocking a 9700K. Um, and, uh... I tried doing... I, I used to have a 4790K until, um... pretty much the end of 2018. Um, and just because I couldn't record and play uh, certain games. It was just a bit too much. Um, so there's that. Uh, for the graphics card, you don't particularly need an amazing graphics card if you're doing streaming nowadays because uh, both Nvidia and AMD have uh, they have uh, video encoding components on the card that are separate to everything. So if you've ever used Shadow Play and you've gone, oh wow, you know, like I can be recording gameplay uh, and it doesn't like my game, the whole point is because it's separate hardware on the on the card. It's subtle, it, but it works like that. It's magic. So I would highly recommend having one of those, especially because again, you're dealing with internet streaming, um, so you don't need crazy quality. And uh, those encoders, like they work well for the quality settings that people share online. I wouldn't 100% use it if you want the crazy crispest. Uh, quality. If you want the like super duper crisp stuff, you're gonna have to do it with software. You're gonna have to do it with a good processor that's you know gonna have enough cores to record while the, you know whatever you're playing is going on. Um, but yeah, no, for YouTube, uh, it's not gonna matter. Any new GPU uh, in both camps will be fine. Um, some people noted that the 1650, if you which is a bit older, so it doesn't really count as much. But the 1650 did have an older NVENC encoder engine in it, so that's one to know. Um, whereas the uh, any of the other ones, including the 1650 Super, and uh, I think the RTX 1630, sorry, uh, the GTX 1630, like the newest bottom class card that NVIDIA just came out with, um, it's got, like... It's got Shadow Play functionality on it, the NVENC encoder. Um, you should probably be not getting a 1630 for its price. I'll look at it, but that's fine. Um, you get your CPU, your GPU. Yeah, the only real other thing you need is your, your disk. Um, the disk is important, and I highly recommend a separate disk. The reason is... Whoa! That's a, that's a bit of a doozy. I highly recommend a separate disk for recording, um, just because... Uh, and this one's a, you know, a subtle feature. Some people like the idea of, like, a high-capacity drive. Um, and high-capacity drives are good, but a lot of the time, your computer does have space for lots of drives. Uh, my case has three three and a half inch bays and four two and a half inch bays on it. Um, the three and a half inch bays you'll use for a hard drive, the two and a half inch, um, for your SSDs. Uh, you can get 
SSDs and hard drives in both form factors, but the SSDs to the three and a half inch are so pricey that usually you're not really gonna, you're not looking out for those ones. And the hard drives that are two and a half inch, you're kind of paying the premium for them to be small, but you don't have to get small ones like that. Um, but they're both commonplace, and of course you can get an M.2 drive, but, uh, you know, if you're, if you're DIYing your computer, you probably wouldn't be using an M.2 drive for your boot drive. I don't think there's any big reason to, um, to have lots of M.2 drives. I guess you can only really have two, uh, unless you have a PCI add-in card, which you, you could use, um, but I think, hey, you got SATA ports, use them up. You know, SATA's, and SATA is, is perfectly fine for what you need. Like, what you need is a separate drive, such that, you know, if your computer decides to, oh, read a lot of content, or write a lot of content, um, you know, it's able to handle the fact that you're also recording media to it. Unless you're streaming directly, in which case, yeah, I guess you don't need a, a disc, particularly. Um, it's good for general, other things. Um, But, uh, I actually, surprisingly, I record on my system drive, my C drive. Uh, it's just, it's a 2 terabyte SSD and it does the job. I should, really, I've got a secondary SSD, um, an older Samsung 850 Evo. It's only a quarter terabyte and it's, uh, it's at that point where the smart check is saying it's 50% health. Which is not actually, it sounds bad, but the, like, that doesn't mean that only 50% of the drive works. It's just, they have, like, a drive will probably fail at 0%, um, maybe, well, maybe fail at 0%, like, no guarantees from there on out, and they warn you at 10. But when it's at 50, it's like, eh, hey, it's still fine, it still works. And it's a, it's, it's a chugger, it's, it's definitely lasting. Um, but yeah, your SSD is, I think, like, what's the average, the expected kind of, not expected, but the, the lifespan people kind of predict out of them is, like, 7 years, maybe a little less. Um, I think I've kept noting I've got a hard drive that is only two years old and it's honking out on me so I'm transferring a ton of stuff off it and uh, as, a, as a testament I have been doing that this entire time I'm recording and I've dropped three frames due to rendering lag out of 83,000 so far. So, there you go. Uh, but yeah, no. Nah. The hardware is, is nice, of course, but it's not 100% vital. And uh, you can obviously stream on whatever you want, or record on whatever you want. I think that those are your creature comforts, just those three. Obviously as well, oh, and the, the really, you know, obvious one is the microphone. And the camera, if you really want to do the camera. But the microphone. I currently use a Blue Yeti. I've had it since, um, 2013, 2014. And, uh, my dad had one. And I remember nabbing it from his room and using it, uh, from time to time. Um... I'm gonna go for it. Oh, no, I'm not going for it. Uh, I remember nabbing it from time to time, so I would have had this quality mic um, earlier, but... Uh, I've got a generic, like, $20 boom arm that I bought from Amazon, and I do have the official uh, Yeti uh, shock mount, which it helps because my mount is currently attached to the same desk that I type on. Um, if you didn't have your boot, a boom attached to the same desk, you probably don't need the shock. Um, but the pop filter definitely helps, and again, you can get that for not too many dollars. Um, again, they're, you know, they're not, they're not necessary. A lot of people have things with, um, microphones on them, so don't feel like you have to rush out and get it, but... And also, people are probably going to find better choices for microphones than the Yeti, and the Yeti's big, so I don't, I don't always recommend the Yeti. Um, I only recommend it, uh, anecdotally. I'm thinking of getting something that's an XLR mic as well, because I've got an audio interface and it's like, oh, I'm still going through USB audio. It'd be nice if I could record in and out of something that's got its own ACO drivers. Uh... Yeah, no, you could totally do that. Um... Here we go. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. Sure, a lot of star bits. One up. Oh! I decided to continue my search for star bits with a trip to the southern seas, so don't call it a vacation. Okay. I shall continue this grind. 
because uh, this, this is obviously a bit of a podcast show, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah, the microphone is definitely nice. I'd say as well, if you can, it's like make sure you, you know, you can close off your room or anything. Um, you don't need a fancy setup uh, if you're doing the microphone only stream um, because uh, really all you need to do is just minimize surrounding sounds. Um, a Yeti is nice because it's directional, um, of a microphone, so if I was to, hold on, and this, this is a test, like, I talk directly into the front of it. If I then walk around to the back of the microphone, note how differently I sound. I'm not 100% quiet, of course, like, it's, it's not, it's not a miracle worker, but it does pretty okay in spotting what's in front of you, um, as in audio-wise. Um, and that's really nice, because then it means that you're less likely to have other kinds of noises just to sneak in. Um, I remember I used to have computer noises. Um, preferably don't have your computer, like... Uh, it, it really depends on your mic, I guess. Um, but, yeah, I'd, I'd probably... I'd just recommend that, I guess. Uh, you could use a webcam. I don't, personally, so I can't tell you any webcam that's good. A lot of people like, uh, they suggest, um, uh, the DSLR camera. I think, um, there's a Linus Tech Tips video on, uh, how to do a streaming setup. And then it's just like, yeah, DSLR camera is like, that one's a bit out of my league. It feels expensive, but definitely, like, modular in the sense of, well, the camera just, you know, sh streams itself to your computer. And it just count it counts as a webcam, but it's just, it's just tracking the camera output, which is very nice, uh, but obviously it's the highest grade stuff, well, yeah, generally up there, the highest grade stuff you can get. Um, I don't know what the trend is nowadays, a lot of people are getting into, I guess, the VTuber kind of craze, or oof, maybe, maybe, maybe we're past that by now, um, but the VTuber stuff is basically you use, um, uh, not face rig, but there's other tools now. Um, and, it has, and it's just a software thing that shows a character, and the character's kind of tracking the webcam movements, but then because you're not showing your real webcam, as long as your character tracks and it doesn't accidentally cut out and show your real face behind it, then, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's fine. But, uh, yeah, I don't really know too much more other than, I guess, if you're using that, make sure your computer's a little bit more powerful, um, because you're obviously rendering a separate game, um, to try and do the 3D character. Um, maybe some other tools are a little bit milder, I know FaceRig was a bit intensive. Um, I'm not too sure if FaceRig's actually, like, dropped off the face of the planet. Get it? Uh, ba ba bum ba bum bum <laughs> Um... I've just, I just personally don't know anyone who actually uses face rig. Um, maybe I should ask. I've got a, a, a couple of mates who do some VTubing um, style stuff. Uh, me, I just go old school. Um, I don't know. I've never really, I've never been one to like, I mean, I do expressions, but like, and, I, I mean, if people look out there, you know, I'm somewhere in uh, various old videos. My face, my teenage face. Never broke out, so I don't look too ugly, but I, I, I can guarantee I looked really like a teenager for a long time, so... I don't know, like your lanky... Teenager lankiness is the worst. Once you get that dad bod, it's like, oh, delish. But... Yeah, uh... But then, yeah, what, what else is there? So we've... We talked about the software, the recording software. Oh, the recording software. Um, yeah, just use OBS. I, even if you're not streaming, OBS has a record feature, and it's nice to, one, have just the same tools for both, but also OBS is remarkably powerful, and um, I think there was a general, like, trend where open source software was um, just a bit, like, it's janky, the interface isn't quite there, but OBS has, like, definitely... You know, it's matured so hard. It's got all the right tools you want. It's no more complicated than, um, you know, XSplit, I feel. Um, uh, 
various other tools might have their own kind of streaming setups. I know my capture card has its own software, um, which can do streaming directly from it. If you're using Shadow Play, that's got streaming directly. But I think OBS is nice uh, because it gives you uh, fairly direct control over the tools that you already have. And I, I you know, we mentioned Shadow Play, but uh, Sh Shadow Play is, uh, you know, ultimately it's a front end for the NVENC uh, encoder. And the NVENC encoder is also exposed in OBS. So, and, and this one's a fun thing, you can test it out. Uh, most NVIDIA GPUs only allow you to record two things at once, which is how they do um, the, uh, like, the live playback thing, where it's like, um, sorry, the live replay, where it's like you're constantly recording to a buffer and it keeps circling around, and then you hit the button and it'll record the last, or save the last, like, 10 minutes. You know, that's recording one source, and then you can also record on top of that, and that's recording another source. But then if you try and, you know, record in OBS, it panics. You disable one of those two, and it's okay. But then you can't do streaming and recording in OBS. So OBS, it's just, it just lets you use NVENC directly like that. Um, or rather, sorry, not directly, but it lets you use NVENC given OBS style scenes. And that's a powerful thing to have. Um, and as well, you also get a little bit more control over just the quality settings. Um, like you can set the bit rates to be not multiples of ten, um, and you can you can control your audio in a way that's a lot nicer, I find. Also, don't be afraid um, to record an MKV quality or, or um, uh, containers in OBS instead of MP4. Yeah, they don't upload directly, but um, if if you're in OBS, go to File and then it's got Remux Recordings, and it just literally Remuxes the MKVs and the MP4s for you. Um, and the reason why uh, you want to do MKVs is because MKVs are restartable. If there's a problem with the container, MKVs have um, allow information that allows effectively restarting a stream, restarting a, uh, a video stream in the middle. So it's a safer bet um, and you can just remux at the end and it takes no time because you're remuxing, you're not re-encoding. You're taking the same video input or the same video stream, same video audio, and then just changing the container format. So it's fairly quick. No issues there. Um, audio quality setup. I somehow, I for some reason record my audio at 320 kilobits. It's probably overkill, but I've got the file space and it doesn't really matter to me. But uh, you could probably do fine with 192. Um, I think YouTube is 160. I'm not too sure about Twitch, but I know a lot of services, like it's either 160. Uh, 128 if they're really picky, 192 sometimes if they're nice, uh, 256 if they're fairly nice, and 320 if you um, pretty much hit the limits, because 320 by that point is streaming service quality, like Spotify or um, Apple Music, uh, not the low, f the low fi the high fi not the high fidelity quality qualities. Uh, but also on top of that, like, I mean, your game audio is like, very often, not... Oh, maybe it is 320 at times. Not too sure. The, like, definitely PS1 games. You know, they're Redbook Audio. They t certainly are. Um, well, they're not 320. They're more than that, but... Uh, you know, there's quality to be had there, I guess. Um, there we go. There we go, good stuff. So has my recording been 33 minutes, and uh, that's three out of six. That's three out of six uh, thousands of star bits to get. So, jeez, okay. Yeah, I'll go with this strat. I'll, I'll recommend this strat if you're playing the game and you want to get those star bits. Um, it's kind of annoying, really annoying. You got to get those star bits, but I'll I'll opine fully. In the, uh, in the full vid that I have not streamed yet. I'm currently, by the way, I'm currently, <laughs> I didn't even say, I'm currently recording this on the 30th of June, 2022. It is the final day of the financial year, the final day of June. Uh, so, but yeah, no, I haven't, obviously I haven't recorded the, uh, me doing the outro. The last stream, so. I'm saving closing thoughts until then.
Uh, Alright, so we talked about OBS, talked about, um... Uh, mic setup, your room, uh... Lots of other quality things, uh... What else? What other tips you do? Like... Uh... Let's see, if you're doing streaming, I think the thing that I've found that works, and I say this as a guy with... You know, who's making their way, but the stuff that seems to be working for me, and I've seen this advice used otherwise, is keep a schedule. I only stream once a week, but... You know, it seems to be pretty okay, although I, I say this knowing I'm gonna stream out of schedule. Um, as, but that's just as a bonus. Cut me some slack. Um, but the, uh, definitely, like, being at the same time spot means that someone, you know, who manages to catch your stream is often there for the next one. And that's definitely something good if you can get just one guy to revisit your stream. I know, for me, it's like, yeah, there's a couple of people who do that. Um, don't be discouraged as well if you don't see numbers that, you know, exactly look your way, because, uh, ultimately, you want to do it because you enjoy it. Don't do it for money or for fame, because, one, you probably don't want to be famous when you really think about it, and then, two, there's not that much money in YouTuber stuff. It's, it's like, your views will grow exponentially. Uh, as in, it's very easy to go from 10,000 views to 100,000 um, and then 100,000 to a million. Uh, how, how am I saying this? I, I mean, yeah, there's a, there's a limit, I guess. Uh, but, oops. Oops. Um, but it's, it's quite tricky to go from 10 views to 100 views. Um, and then, yeah, 100 to 1,000 is just equally as large a hurdle. That's, that's what I meant. Um, but your revenue is directly proportional to the amount of views you get. If anything, it's actually a little, uh, not directly as well. You get more, um, CPM, clicks per melee, which is a thousand. Um, you get a higher CPM if your video is generally more popular. So you'll actually get more money per view. Um, and that sounds, in, you know, in, encouraging until you realize yeah, like, until you're really making, you know, big view counts, that CPM is fairly low. It's like, I'm, like, I'm getting, you know, a couple dozen views on a, on a stream upload. And then it's like, the CPM is fairly low on its own. So that video will only get, like, seven cents. Um, I put it on anyways, because it's like, yeah, you know, why not? It's no effort, really. I wanted to do this anyway, so it's all cool. Let's make money off other people's licensed property. That's what, uh, that's what Sony would, uh, claim. I only single out Sony because, uh, I had to do the, the whole counterclaim stuff. They are still the only people who have ever done an actual copyright strike on my channel. And then it got immediately, not immediately, resolved, but... Alright, uh, yeah, yeah, while we're at it, let's add this one in. Um, be cautious about copywritten material. Don't, like... Don't get too up in arms if a company, you know, doesn't want you to stream their game or they don't want you to, um, to, like, you know, have certain music in your stream. Uh, you may be going, like, oh, you know, but, like, it's not right. I know. Like, it's, it, like, I'm, I'm not saying, like, oh, it's free advertising, because there are, like, some people who do, unfortunately, kind of share full contents of things. It's, like, spoiling the entire, like, you know, a film ending, if it's, like, an important twist. It's, like, that's the whole point of why people go see the film. Um, although, granted, you can spoil that ending, um, without breaking copyright. It's fairly, it's, it's fairly odd. Copyright laws are very odd. Um, but, like, legitimately, don't feel like if someone copyright claims stuff and prevents you from, from finding stuff, uh, or prevents you from using stuff in your videos. Find something new. I I played two streams worth of Earthbound, and I struggled to get both of those videos re-uploaded to YouTube because Sony Music Entertainment held the rights to um, a one singular publishing of the Earthbound soundtrack, and suddenly that meant they could copyright uh, 
claim the video and block it from all regions. Uh, I disputed it, they then struck my channel, I appealed it, they then didn't you know, listen, I then did the thing of going, hey, send me to court, and they dropped the claims, but then they did it on the second video, and I had to go through it all again, and it's not fun, so... Um, I would ultimately say, don't fret yourself over that. It's ultimately their loss that the small up-and-coming YouTuber slash Twitch streamer doesn't, um, you know, doesn't share this fun experience they've had. You could say maybe in the, in the realms of video games, it's like, you know, there's some games out there where it's like, yeah, there, like, there legitimately isn't much value to play, like, the net value seems not as good after watching one person play the game and then you buying the game. But I think there's other games, especially, I, I try to make it the games that I play. Um, I really do, do want to play games that encourage other people to play them, or at the very least, like, look at them with an interesting lens, because they're games you can't just buy anymore, and... Uh, it's not that they're not in copyright, it's that they're in no one cares copyright land. Like... You know, so, someone might go, hey, I gotta defend this 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 game. Um, I still have to massage it a little bit. I, I noted during uh, the Toy Story 2 and the Bugs Life uh, and the Monsters Inc. streams, it's like... YouTube uh, doesn't like the full, the raw uh, movie clips. Um, Twitch just seems to be okay with it. They don't seem to strike me on those ones. Um, well, not strike, but they don't seem to mark them. Um, if anything, it's a bit safer nowadays. Uh, you can easily upload something in private, and then usually you don't get a strike. Usually it's very, it's not easy to get a strike for copywritten content until, you know, it's got a lot of views. So don't be, don't feel ashamed to upload a video in private and test out the waters and see does this get a claim. Uh, there's gonna be some videos that will retroactively get claims, I guess, but um, generally, like, the, the safe ones. There's a lot of safe ones out there. Um, I think I remember, um, uh, Nintendo going back and putting copyright claims on a lot of their soundtracks, um, but I feel like we're kind of past that point of, um, doing it retroactively. Uh, seems to be a lot of videos now where it's like, or a lot of, lot of instances now where the video has to be kind of fresh, um, because people, they register stuff on YouTube all the time. YouTube's copyright ID system has been around for so long that at the very least, it's not a surprise. Uh, on the on the rule of copywritten music, uh, I generally keep it pretty safe. Uh, all the music that I found, I found directly on YouTube. Which is not to say that I own the rights to any of the stuff I use in the intermission music and stuff. But it's at least like music that I know is fairly safe from being claimed. These are like more... Slightly more obscure songs or songs that are like fairly... You know, direct from games and haven't been. I don't know actually, because one of them is the Final Fantasy 13 Chocobo theme, which you'd think would be something that gets claimed. I don't know. Uh, who knows? Maybe maybe a bunch of my videos are gonna get you know flagged in the past. Uh, but yeah, no, don't um. Don't, uh, well, don't, don't use the copywritten stuff particularly, but then don't be too, like, I guess depending on how you do your stream, um, if you want to, and the pro tip, I say separate your audio streams, because then it's very easy to take your audio that you're doing for it, so for my examples of I'm playing a licensed Disney game, they've got, uh, full motion videos from the film, I can easily edit out the, the film and cut out the audio there, bit of shade there. Um, I was on a, um, or like I can cut out the game audio and keep my commentary intact. Um, like that's the benefit of using multiple streams. That does mean I guess you need an editing software to handle that in post if you are using that. Um, I use Premiere. I hear DaVinci uh, Resolve is pretty much like the 
the de facto free editor now for people. Um, and it's got like a, a um, like a community edition one where it's like a reduced feature set, but it does the stuff you want. And it doesn't like, we're past the days of watermarking things now, which is so nice. Like, I, I, I really appreciate it because we used to be in this era where um, I used to use Sony Vegas for a bunch of stuff. I used to use uh, other shoddy software. Um, it legitimately was Movie Maker for some periods at the beginning. Um, but, like, yeah, these tools, it's like, they're, they've got the bit of stuff that you want. They have the ability to do just some, some on-screen effects that allow you, you know, a fair bit of control. Uh, in, you know, for example, like adding text or something like that. Um, tracking sometimes is also kind of nice, like animating things. Um, and then, uh, yeah, some multiple audio streams. Um, being able to have multiple video tracks kind of going at the same time. There's a lot of neat things in the video editing world, so don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, just test the waters out by uploading videos to YouTube privately. Um, I like the idea of if I do a stream and then I upload to YouTube, I actually do the direct uh, Twitch feature to upload the, the stream directly to YouTube through their services. Uh, but I usually use that to test out the waters of the copyright because, and also, like, I'm, I was using Twitch quality, so... Uh, so it's good to, to do a manual upload later, um, just for my sake. Um, up to you on that one. It takes a bit of time to get the bot on YouTube, though. Um, unless you're uh, affiliated on YouTube or, or on Twitch. Like, you've got the 50 followers, you've got your average three viewers, um, like, kind of thing. If you've hit that milestone, you can't upload your VOD to YouTube until 24 hours afterwards, so you might as well, you know, take the time and make it a quality version later. Um, I don't know if the... I guess they do let you do full streams, because um, I guess like Proton John does it. Proton John's a big streamer over there, so... Uh, any other tips? Um, yeah, copyright stuff, don't do... Have a good time as well. Um, oh, oh, yeah, I guess just a general one on hardware. Um, two monitors definitely helps. Uh, I've got OBS open on one monitor and my game full screen on the other one. Um, if you don't have two monitors, uh, it gets tricky, but make sure you can pop out your chat and as well, um, maybe some vital information. You can have OBS itself very small if you want. Um, but it's good to be able to glance back at the chat without, like, tabbing out of your game or anything like that. Um, that definitely helps. Uh, that's more if you're streaming, though. If you're recording and you're fairly certain it's all working fine, you know, sure, go with it. Um, but just, like, have fun. Just go with it. Don't don't worry about, like, numbers or stuff like that. Like, don't, don't go like, oh, no one's watching. Because it's just like, hey, I mean, you're the one who wanted to stream it. So you've obviously had the desire to play the game online, you know, it doesn't really matter how many people are watching you, you have that desire, so go with it, have a, have a run with it, don't feel like you have to do it forever, of course, like if you want to stop, you can stop, I stopped, so and I'm just like, I'll just come back because I missed it, I really enjoyed it, I want to keep doing it a bit, so, you know, no hard commitments, unless you're um, partnered on Twitch, then maybe hard commitments, because that's kind of part of the part of the agreement I think um, is there any other good tips I keep I, I'm saying this to myself this is all a soliloquy video My brain blanked out, I didn't even like click in my head, it's like, oh yeah, my son is so... And I don't think I'm quite within a thousand, am I? How many did I pick up? It was like 500, wasn't it? Yeah, 565, that's not, that's not there. I... Someone's gonna help me. Oh! I guess I didn't die enough for him to yell at me on that one, is he? Huh? 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, is he gonna tell me about two player mode? I don't know, he's gonna tell me I've been dying. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm trying to think of, like, just the generic thing to say off the top of my head. Just to fill the space. Because you're obviously, I mean, if you've gotten this far in the video, uh, big credit to you. Um, yeah, massive credit to you if you watch the, uh, the soliloquy style thing. And especially, um, I feel like when I did a, the Pokemon Gold uh, stream, it was, it was something a bit meta. When I did the Pokemon Gold stream, and I had, um, uh, I think it was like part 10, I legitimately, I hit the end of Victory Road in part 9, uh, and then I didn't have, like, I felt so underleveled to ha tackle on the Elite Four. I think I tackled on the Elite Four at the beginning of the stream and then was like, oh no, this isn't working out. I spent the entire rest of the stream grinding, and then I spent half of the next stream grinding, and I'm like, man, you know, like, I mean, that was my dedicated stream spot, but it's also like, oh, like, I always wondered whether I should have done something like this, which is a, um, like a, a, a midways video, I don't know, like, like the, the, the chat, the struggle, the, the, the work stream. I guess I usually don't play games that have grinding in them. Um, when I played Pokemon Blue, just on my YouTube channel, I made it a big point in that, uh, let's play as well to never, like, cut content. I never cut, like, um, any of the trainers. So legitimately in that whole let's play, that is every, well, that wasn't every single trainer in the game, but it was like every single trainer I fought, I kept that in full. Because um, I was like, that's the game. I'm not representing the game in really the most accurate way if I'm just showing you, like, if I'm just skipping stuff. And I, I know so many um, Pokemon streams or Pokemon videos where, like, that's what they did. They they made it Spark Notes. That's okay, but, you know, this is like a. I like this kind of style of just me on the couch. Um, kind of just playing a game, I'm not in a couch, but, uh, you know, just playing a game and, uh, having, having a bit of a good time. Uh, so in turn it's like, yeah, I feel, I feel kind of compelled, not compelled, but just like, I don't like the idea of cutting out stuff because it's like, well, I'm cutting out grinding, why, why is the game all grindy? I feel like, if anything, that gives it a bit of a misrepresentation. You're looking at the game and you're suddenly like, oh, look at all these exciting bits. You ever see anyone play, um, uh... I'm trying to think, like... Oh, my brain's latched onto Sonic 06. I remember, um... Uh, was it Hellfire? Is that the, the name of the, like, fairly old, um channel and they played Sonic 06 and they edited out so many of the loading screens and, and then they were like also by the way and, and they did all the commentary and posts which I thought was like kind of interesting um but uh they edited out all the um like or they edited down the loading screens so they just specifically timed it to make it look like they went really fast like no hard like segue or cuts um there was some, like, here and there, like, just, like, wandering around and it's like, oh, like, I was supposed to go here. Like, that kind of stuff. Or, um, I think they sometimes cut, like, multiple attempts of doing, um, some levels, because some of them in Sonic 06 look incredibly brutal. Incredibly, like, repetitive. And that's a game that I've yet to play. Maybe I'll play at some point. Um, but, oh boy, one day I'll play Sonic 06. Where's, where's Sega with the Sonic 06 remaster? Where they just put the game on as, like, raw as possible. Listen, it's not, like, it's not even against them to, you know, put all the characters. Every single character in Sonic 06 has appeared in, in other games. It's even Mephiles now. Even Mephiles. I guess they got rid of the, the, they don't want to refer to the Kiss in another one. Um, but, yeah, no, I like the idea of, uh, of having these games in their full regard. If I'm playing it, and I think it's a little bit boring, 
I'll, I'll, like, I'll say this. I'll just be like, yep, I'm doing a slightly boring, you know, catch-up stream or something like that. Um, maybe I should, like, try and fit in, like, more bonus streams as well. Because I think the only other one I've ever done is, uh, for Toy Story 2 I did a glitch, um, kind of showcase as a, as a secondary stream. Because I beat the whole game in one stream. And I was like, oh, okay. Um... And uh, that was an interesting one as well, because I think I did that stream on a Wednesday, uh, because my internet full-on cut out for an entire week. Uh, so that was good fun. Cut out like the, the Tuesday after I did the stream, and then uh, it didn't come back on until the... basically the Tuesday after. It was an entire week, and I still have no clear reason why it even went down. Internet's always a weird one. It's like, we've got like better tools, for monitoring and uh, observing the status of the internet, but then it, like, it keeps going down in weird ways. Um, and I always keep saying, like, networking is magical, but it, then it breaks in any possible way. Because it's... not that it's flimsy, but that, you know, it's real time. It relies on so many things to be working just in, in tandem. So... For example, your internet will probably say it's down even when just it's the name server, the, the domain name server. So if your computer can't figure out where Microsoft.com is, but it knows where every single other site on the internet is, well, no, you, you don't have internet according to Microsoft, according to Windows. Um, yeah. I guess this is something, uh, since this one is uh, usually a direct to YouTube, although uh, I might be using the Twitch uh, rebroadcast feature to basically upload this as a video and then go, oh, like, um, you know, you're watching it live. Uh, in which case, hello, live chat that's not appearing on screen because it's not live, but rebroadcast chat. Um, but, uh,. I guess, for, for the comments, like, uh, I'm curious if anyone has, like, any, like, other YouTubers they follow, and just, like, uh, particularly in the video game realm, don't tell me you, you follow, um, who, who's, uh, who's the one? Logan Paul, is that, is that too, too old-fashioned now? I tell ya, that forest changed, changed the face of the internet. I have, I have very surprised that that happened. I might as well just finish it at the next, sorry, not finish it, but like get the star, because it's like, I've got like 400 more servers to go after this. Ah, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm curious, like, other, like, YouTubers who do video game content. I, I do watch, um, Scott the Woz. He's good fun. He has a great style of humor. I do enjoy it. Um, and, uh, I follow Proton John, but I don't actively keep up with a lot of his videos, unfortunately. I'm waiting for Superman 64, though. I know I'll put down everything and finish Superman 64, uh, when he does, that is. I've already finished it. He's gotta finish it. Ah! Oh, I hit the block. Cool. Okay. Um... But yeah, no, I, like, I, I do struggle with keeping up with YouTubers, and that's why I do the, the two hours a week. Uh, except this week, where I'm apparently doing four hours. And I'm totally not skipping next week. I'm just gonna launch into a, a different game on Monday, so... Uh... Hi, hello, my toad. Oh, we found one more star bit. So how many do I need? This, this is the important number I'm gonna need to like track in my head. I right, do the math. We're getting to nine 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 nine. So like three eleven. Three eleven. Sure, I have a lot of star bits. I found this one. Up. I'm not gonna hit a hundred one ups, but uh, I think it only does go up to ninety nine. I don't think it lets you keep going. Um, I know. It was a Super Mario 3D world. It does indeed let you keep going to a thousand if you want, or um, or it's like crown, crown, crown. It's like a very like odd representation that keeps going on, and it's not like a, a glitch. It's just that's just how they represented it. So yeah, I don't know what 
What's with the flickering? It's probably going insane every time you see it. I'm like, oh my gosh, the flickering. This is the only time I've ever noticed uh, it, so I'm just gonna attribute it to an emulator fault. Um, I love how, like, way back when, like, I don't remember when I actually started playing this game on the channel. I think it was 2012, I think. Um, so it was only two years after this game came out. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, the, the thoughts of emulating it, like, didn't seem that feasible then. I knew it would eventually happen, but I didn't really think, like, you know, we'd have an emulator that does the job so well. I'm amazed how good the dolphin emulator is. Um, uh, I, the, the weirdest part of the dolphin emulator as well is that, of course, you've got to emulate the controller. Or at least, or in my case, I'm using a real controller. Um, and you buy tools to um, make it work. Or, or in this case, you only need to get the sensor bar to work because uh, we figured out how to make generic Bluetooth stacks that connect directly to the controller and tell it the right things to do, which is amazing. That's an amazing job, Dolphin. To, to, to work with real controllers like that, it's great. Um, I think uh, our PCS3, the PS3 emulator side, is also doing pretty good and uh, supports, I think it does support the hardware controllers pretty decently. Um, by the way, I love how Dolphin supports the balance board as well. The only thing, it doesn't support the, um, the speaker on the Wii Remote. Uh, on a stream recording, that's fine, because you're never going to hear, you know, that speaker. That's never going to, like, you're never going to hear it on stream, and it sounds crackly anyways. But in particular, it doesn't emulate nice. So, there's that. Um, but, you know, I, like, yeah, I think... I think SNES 9X was like the, and it still is, to some degree, the um, SNES emulator of choice, but it's like, you know, we've got a lot of other nice little emulators out there. The progress has come along a long way, and uh, the general, I guess, things that people have figured out, so uh, just-in-time compiling, um, uh, pre-rendering shaders, just understanding shaders better, to effectively recreate, um, you know, techniques in more modern APIs, but still looking accurate. And all that is, you know, amazing how we can get that all to work. Um, and we still can't get Gran Turismo 4 emulating properly. That seems to be a complete enigma, so who knows. Um, but yeah, no, it's good fun to, you know, that these, these game titles can be preserved in a really nice way, and I'm kind of glad as well because then it means I don't have to pull out the system to play it. I can just play it in software on my computer. Okay, so... I've been working hard to find some star bits. Right now I've got some star bits. Alright, so here's, here's where you go... Oh, okay. You hold down deposit long enough, and it just stops. It grays out. And now, you can't put any more starbits in. I believe there's so many starbits, I can't even hold on to any more for you. What to do? And he just leaves it at that. That doesn't seem very climactic, but uh, I think, is it now? There it is. There it is. I'm not doing it now. That's, that's what the stream's for, but... Uh, there it is. The Grandmaster Galaxy has a Comet Medal. I'm hidden fly to it. I'm just to demonstrate that's got a comet. Oh my gosh, pranks the comet. The perfect run. It's not even like Daredevil run or speed run. It's just the perfect run. After the ultimate test as well, so. So I will save that for the uh, stream, which I guess since I am pre-recording this and I'm uploading it to Twitch, that means it's about to go live now, so. Enjoy the show, and uh, catch you fellas on the flip.